Good evening and welcome to the Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting and regular meeting for June 7th. Can I have a roll call, please? Chairman Human? Here. Vice Chair Koshal? Here. Commissioner Morgan? Here. Commissioner Quinn? Here. Commissioner Velasquez? Here. Commissioner Barry Kello? Here. Commissioner Lopez? Here. We have quorum. Thank you very much. First, next item is the Pledge of Allegiance, led by the Vice Chair. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. Okay. So I do have a few speaker, a few cards for items that are not part of the, the honey cycle group. So um, on item number three, 
which is the Wayne. I, um, Ty Schumann, do you wish to speak on the item or are you just opposed to it? Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, item number five. There's a question. Will the ch I have a question from Didi. I apologize for butchering your last name here, but um, will the change the zoning for other properties just east of the parcel on Channel Boulevard? Staff, do you address that on number five? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The uh, request is to rezone the subject site only. It will not affect any surrounding properties. Okay. Thank you very much. And then item number nine, Amos Vance. I do not want more music in the neighborhood. Uh, Amos, do you want to speak on the item or just want to state your opposition? If you want to talk about it, if you want to come up and um, state your name and address for the record up on the dais right here, please. Good evening. I'm here, I think I'm representing the neighborhood. The people in our neighborhood, just, they think if they complain or stand up for something that they may be going against the city. So they depend on the city to make decisions. I live about 30 feet from the perch and the music is loud enough there. I have foam on my bedroom, on the walls, and I have earplugs. But having more music in the neighborhood, I don't think is a necessity. This, this entertainment uh, permit is just right next to the perch. I don't know how you'd have such loud music right next to each other, for one. But I don't, there's houses across the street and right now on the next lot. So I want you to consider, because I never did see the site map until I see it on TV. So we don't want any more music in our neighborhood. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Staff, will you address the question I had earlier on the type of music, especially early in the morning on this particular case? Um, yes. I have spoken to the applicant, and he stated that the music that would be playing um, 10 a.m. in the morning would just be speakers, which are a part of this application. So it would be um, speakers, and it would not be unreasonably loud to disturb area residents. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Chair. What, what do you mean by speakers? It would be music over the speakers and not live bands? What would you, What is meant by just speakers? Somebody okay. speaking? No, it would just be music over the speakers, not live bands coming through the speakers at 10 a.m. in the morning. So more like just music C CDs being, play. being played or? Background music going on. Okay. 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 All right. Cool. Thank you. Okay. I know we had additional stipulation then on number, sorry, yeah. on number eight, do you want to read that into the record, please? Yes. So the following condition of approval will be added to um, item number eight, which is uh, Crown Chevron. It's going to be uh, condition number five. The applicant shall work with staff uh, to provide additional trees on site. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to address number nine for a second um, to Mr. Vance. Um, this couple of different things that we've put in there um, into this, there's a one year time step. So if there is a problem, there is also a phone number for um, to be able to uh, address it where you can call. Uh, but again, it has a one year time step. So if the applicant is not being a good neighbor and the music's above what's supposed to be, you know, they're going to have to come back here in a year. And in that case, the permit might not be, be issued. So I specifically asked what type of music was going to be played, especially in the early mornings. And I hope these guys are going to be good neighbors. They, I, you know, the, the restaurant's been fairly successful. Um, it's part of our whole, you know, downtown entertainment area, but I do hear you. And I think they, they need to be aware of that, that they're trying not to disturb the neighbors. That's why I was questioning early morning music um, in terms of that as well and stuff. So, um, to the audience, we have a study session prior to this where we discussed items one through 10, 
Um, is there anybody in the audience other than the cards that I got that want to talk on any of those items? Okay, see none. Okay, what's the council, uh, commi I'm sorry, commission's pleasure. Chair. Vice Chair. I'll move to approve the consent agenda with the additional conditions number five to item eight. Okay, do I have a second? Second. second. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure who got the second, but staff, did Julie get which one? Okay, we'll give it to the, we'll give it to the newbie. So yeah, so anyway, okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. The next item is item number eleven. Uh, staff, do you want to make a presentation for the audience? What we'll do is staff will make a presentation. We'll go to the applicant to make their presentation, and then I'll go to the speaker cards. If anybody, besides what I have up here, if there's anybody who would like else to speak, please fill out a speaker card and give it to our clerk. Lauren, you're up. Good evening, Planning and Zoning Commissioners. Uh, tonight on your action agenda, we have uh, item 11, PLH 2218 and PLT 2217 Honeysuckle Trail. The request before you this evening, there's, there's a couple of uh, requests as part of this request. So I'm gonna walk you through it uh, a couple of times through this PowerPoint. But the request before you is a rezoning from SF33 single family to planned area development for single family residential and a city park, a preliminary development plan for subdivision layout and housing product, as well as a preliminary plat for a 48 lot single family subdivision in city park with retention. The subject site is located uh, at the northwest corner of Warner and Bull Moose. Uh, it's approximately a quarter of a mile from Dobson and Warner. The subject site uh, fronts onto Warner Road and an, an existing church or a dilapidated church exists on site uh, with existing uh, retention along the north side of the property. To the east of the subject site is a Collector Street Bull Moose Drive and east of that is a single family subdivision zoned SF 8.5, uh, the orange tree subdivision of lots uh, averaging 7,000 square foot lots. To the north, we have El Alba Way and single family zoned properties uh, SF 18. And then to the west of the property, uh, all of that land is unincorporated and currently located within Maricopa County. Along Warner Road at the uh, southwest corner of the, the, of the proposed site, uh, there is a school, uh, the foundation for the School for the Blind. There's two single family homes that are zoned uh, rural agrarian within the county. Uh, and then we have a, a city operated water production facility, as well as uh, additional unincorporated uh, rural residential properties north of that. To give you a little bit of background on the property, the subject property located on the left side of the screen was annexed into the city in 1979. It was zoned with the property indicated in the blue uh, with the larger subdivision around. The proposed property was zoned SF33 which would allow for one single family home per uh, lot, uh, minimum lot size would be 33,000 square feet. The properties to the east uh, were given a zoning of SF7, uh, which were single family homes that averaged 7,000 square feet. And north of the property, uh, those lots were given uh, SF18. It was one zoning case with the three different land classifications. In that case, there was a preliminary plat that, or there was a plat that was established. Um, and the north side of this property was identified as a track for retention. Uh, 
It was privately owned, but it was retention for the entire subdivision to the east. Um, at that time, the property was uh, owned by a church. A year later, in 1980, because a church isn't permitted by right on an SF-33 property, they acquired a use permit to allow for a church. So the, the picture on the right side of the screen uh, is from 1986. So you can see, you know, uh, seven years after being, being annexed, you can see the subdivision filled in and developed with the church developing as well. In the circle, you'll see the church with the north side of the property being used as retention. Uh, the church uh, has operated for, for decades, um, but at one point the pastor became ill. And at that time, uh, from what we understand, the retention basin was not being maintained and silt was building up into the areas. Fast forward to 2014, September 2014, there was a uh, large storm that occurred here in Chandler. Um, the picture in front of you shows you uh, standing in or standing on the north side of the basin, looking east into the community. Water inundated the retention basin, going up over the street and onto the single family driveways, just reaching their garage doors. Uh, retention basins are required to hold um, a hundred year, two hour storm. And if I understand that correctly, it's 2.2 inches. This storm dropped about three times that amount and being um, not built to current standards and not being maintained throughout the years, it flooded the, the entire neighborhood. As part of um, my packet that was sent to you, uh, one of the attachments, one of the neighbors provided a, a packet of pictures from uh, many angles throughout that neighborhood. Fast forward even more, uh, we get to 2018. There's a home builder, New Village Homes. They submitted a zoning application uh, to rezone the property to allow for 57 single family homes. Uh, they were gonna keep the retention basin as the city at the time said they had no desire to maintain or take over responsibility of the, of the basin. Uh, under this proposal, there was going to be private amenities in between the subdivision and the retention basin. Uh, we later found out in reviewing the plans that at that time, the, the calculations were incorrect and it wouldn't be able to suffice the correct amount of, of retention required. And due to the amount of opposition, uh, the case was withdrawn in July of 2019. So we come before you today with a request. Uh, the request before you is a rezoning to rezone the property from SF33 to planned area development for a single family residential and a city park. There's an associated preliminary development plan for a subdivision layout and includes the housing product for the subdivision, uh, as well as a preliminary plat for the 48 lot single family subdivision and city park with retention. I'm gonna break this up into two portions. We're gonna talk about the subdivision and then we'll move north to the park. All right, so on the south, uh, uh, Kay Hoff is uh, a home builder here in the Valley uh, and they are proposing to rezone the property to planned area development for single family homes. They're proposing 48 lots within eight acres. That, those acres are only outlined in green they were unable to use any of the acres from the park or the re retention basin to the north to equate towards their density. So with those eight acres and the 48 single family lots, they're coming in at eight units per acre. The standard lot sizes are 4,000 to 6,859 square feet. The smallest lot uh, is 40 by 100 feet. The subdivision is providing public streets within the subdivision, which would allow for parking on both sides of the street. Uh, traffic has reviewed this plan as well as fire and you know, have signed off on the design of it. Uh, each property or each home, pardon me, will have a, a two car garage as well as a driveway to allow for two vehicles to park. 
All of the 48 homes being proposed are two-story with a maximum height of 30 feet. The perimeter wall along Warner Road uh, varies, and at some points it's 10 feet, but at certain points it um, meanders from 10 to 15 feet, <clears throat> and uh, at the southwest corner it gets as deep as 58 feet to allow for plantings of trees out along Warner Road and to break up the wall. Lauren, I don't want to interrupt, but do you want to clarify something? You, you talked about the eight acres it only can include where the homes are. In a normal development where the open space would be included as part of the density, correct? That is correct, Chair. Okay. So if you throw that in, it would be a lot less than six per acre. But because it's being deeded to the city or there's a development agreement, that changes why the density seems to be high. Okay. I just want to clarify that. As part of this request, there's a preliminary development plan for housing product. The home builder is providing four separate floor plans with three architectural themes, including Spanish, Spanish modern, farmhouse, and contemporary. The homes being proposed are range from 1,979 square feet to 2,640 square foot. The building setbacks for these homes on each individual lot the front setback would be 20 feet from back a sidewalk to front of the garage to allow for vehicles to park and not overhang the sidewalk. And then 13 feet in the front for any livable or uh, front patios. Side yards for this, uh, they would be required to maintain five feet on each side of the home. And rear yard setbacks are 10 feet uh, with the ability to reduce that setback to five feet for any accessory buildings. Now moving to the north, the request is to rezone this property from SF33 to uh, PAD for a city park with retention. There was a preliminary development plan submitted and it has been evaluated by city engineers and we can confirm that the basin can retain that acquire, the required volume calculations. Between the park and the retention basin, it's totaling approximately 4.5 acres. Now, let me break that down for you. So on the south portion of it, which would be between the subdivision and the retention basin, the home builder is, is providing, uh, they're going out there and regrading the entire site to accommodate uh, retention for all surrounding properties, including theirs. And they plan on building a park. Uh, the park will be 1.7 acres large, and it will include a tot lot, a shaded ramada with seating, and a barbecue area. Uh, it will be turf with sidewalks leading down into the area. North of that, in order to get a usable public park open to the public, the retention basin had to be uh, deep in order to uh, accumulate all that water. So the retention basin is 2.8 acres large and it's secured with view fencing due to the depth of it. It's uh, proposed at five feet. Maricopa County requires anything over 3.4 feet deep to be secured because it, it could pool. Upon completion, the city will own and maintain both the retention basin and the park. This is being processed through a development agreement which would be heard before city council um, as well uh, with the zoning case. It's tied to the zoning case. One of the residents years ago brought it to my attention that in this area, there's no uh, park within their square mile. This exhibit is taken from uh, our existing city parks uh, within our general plan. The circle is the square mile between Warner to Elliott from Dobson to Price. In this area, there's no no public park for the neighbors to attend. All right, so as for neighborhood outreach, you know, one of the reasons we requested this beyond action is um, we've heard a lot from residents in the surrounding neighborhood. They had, uh, they were only required to have one neighborhood meeting, but due to the amount of attendees from the first, uh, we requested that a second neighborhood meeting be held. The first was held in, on January 10th, and the second, April 12th of this year. The notification was posted on Nextdoor app, as well as posted on site uh, 
two weeks prior to the meeting. Then the applicant actually went out of their way to actually notify and invite all of the residents of Orange Tree. When you look at the exhibit on, on, on the screen, the zoning code, code only requires that residents with property owners within 600 feet of the proposal um, be notified of any neighborhood meetings. The applicant and home builder went out and invited everybody from Orange Tree. And um, so both meetings were well attended, standing room only. Um, as of today, staff is aware of opposition to the request as well as uh, support to clean up the property. Um, neighborhood uh, minutes, meeting minutes were attached as an exhibit so you could understand some of the questions that were asked. Um, but what we hear is uh, an increase in traffic from the 48 lots and then residents wanting to drive to the park. The exhibit before you shows the proposed subdivision and park um, in its proposed location. And we've heard concerns about the intersection of Bull Moose and Warner. Um, after talking with our, our city traffic engineer, you know, there was a traffic study done one year ago and there were numbers, the numbers did not warrant a traffic signal. Furthermore, when we look at this exhibit, there's a uh, blue square, that's bull moose on the other side. Because they were built offset, uh, it, it makes, uh, it, it, it does not uh, set up a good, um, it's, it's not a good area to set up a uh, traffic signal because of the offset of bull moose and the median turn lane. Um, residents were concerned with the amount of traffic. I've circled all of the exits from the subdivision the purple hatched area on this exhibit are county islands. Uh, we've heard from a lot of county, county island residents the concern of, of residents from this proposal um, going through their subdivision to get to Elliott. Um, other concerns that we've heard is you know, the, the request for a two-story product. Um, the, the property, the subdivision adjacent, it's zoned SF 8.5. Um, although there are no two-story homes in that subdivision, they do have the ability to increase to a two-story as permitted by right in their zoning. Um, we've, we've heard that it is too dense. Uh, when we look at the proposal, it's um, in compliance with our general plan as it sits along an arterial. This is a true infill development. It sits between uh, two different uh, intensities of, you know, rural large acre lots to homes that are uh, approximately uh, averaging 7,000 square foot lots. Um, it's in close proximity to a highway and, you know, staff feels that it is a compatible land use as designed. Um, the other concern we've heard, uh, the yellow line indicated on here is an irrigation ditch located within the county properties and just wondering how that would be maintained. Um, from, um, from what we understand and the exhibits provided to the city, it seems that that ditch is completely within the Maricopa County properties. So as I was citing, uh, our general plan designates this site as neighborhoods, which staff does find to be in compliance, this request with the general plan as a, uh, the infill development uh, in between different intensities. Uh, it's located along an arterial within a half mile of a freeway. Uh, it provides a variety of housing within the neighborhood and it's a compatible land use. It provides a park for the surrounding neighborhoods within that square mile. And it resolves a retention issue for the, for the region. Staff has provided standard stipulations as well uh, couple of stip, uh, stipulation, PDP stipulation number 10 was also included as requested by a resident uh, stating that lots uh, one and 42, which are the lots immediately adjacent to Bull Moose, be limited to the two smaller floor plans as to, you know, uh, since they are closer, the, those two side homes are closer than any of the others to help uh, create a better buffer for the existing community. And with that, uh, staff recommends approval and I'd be happy to answer any questions.
Lauren, did you work, there was a stipulation I talked about in the pre-meeting about articulation along Warner. Did you work up a step on that? Chair uh, Human, I was able to follow up with the applicant. And so the way that the stip is currently written, we have a stip that says uh, PDP stip number two, that the same elevation should not be built side by side or directly across the street. Uh, they've agreed to add a, an additional stipulation that would limit lots one through eight from um, being the same elevation and or floor plan okay. um, for lots one through eight, which back up to Warner Road. Okay. So if, if this gets approved tonight and goes to council, at least there's some articulation there. Okay, thank you. Lauren, can you answer a question on a land use? If a charter school bought this land by right, could they just come in without a, the city really having any control over it? Uh, Chair Human, uh, if the charter school was publicly funded, uh, they would not be required to meet any of the city city standards with regards to zoning. Uh, they would just have to meet life safety and fire. Uh, they're not even required to meet uh, traffic standards. Um, and so if a publicly funded charter school was to acquire this property, um, you know, they, they could go in by right and possibly secure that retention basin and fence it off because schools generally don't allow um, non-school users to be on site. Okay. And if another church wanted to buy this site, since it already has a church on there, could that just be done without any other than maybe a PDP for the city? Uh, it would probably need a, a new use permit uh, okay. just to ensure because it's not permitted by right under an SF-33, okay. but a use permit would possibly be, be required okay. if not like for like. Okay. Questions of staff, Jeff? Yes. Thank you, Lauren. I have four questions, actually. Fire them off at you. Um, can you go back to the the previous slide? I think it was resident concerns slide. Yeah, neighborhood concerns. Number one question, is there currently a traffic signal at Mesquite at Dobson? Uh, through the chair, Commissioner Vasquez, no. It, it, it's only a, a stop sign. Dobson is, uh, there's no stop sign there, no signal, just a stop sign at Mesquite. Okay. Uh, second question: Are all of the product two story? That is correct. They are. All okay. all of it is two story. Thank you. Third question: um, Are there existing dry wells in the the fenced off proposed basin to the north? Are there engineered dry wells in there existing or proposed with this development to drain within thirty six hours? Okay. Uh uh, through through the chair, Commissioner Vasquez, um, uh, there's, to our knowledge, I don't believe there's any in there today. Okay. Uh, with the request before you, um, there are no, um, if, and I'll confirm with the applicant maybe when they come up, but I, I believe that they're not requesting dry okay. wells to be undergrounded. Yeah. Okay. And then the last question, um, at the 1.7 acre park, is there any retention other than just sidewalks within the park? going to that park site, the improved park, or is it all going to the Northern Basin? Um, chair, uh, through the chair, Commissioner Vasquez, a great question. So the exhibit before you, you know, you'll see that green line. So a portion of the subdivision retains along Bull Moose uh, within that green area, and then a little bit spills over, which the city engineer signed off on, but everything in the park would uh, drain towards the retention basin. Okay, thank you. Yep. And to add on that, a portion of the subdivision's retention would flow towards Warner in that uh, southwest corner. Okay, Commissioner Lopez. Yeah, so the uh, the, the new retention basin, talking about having to go down to the, uh, was it an additional two and a half feet or two, two and a half feet down? Yeah, it, it's a total of five feet deep. Um, so, yeah, okay, so probably additional two, two. and a half. Um, and that is a, Bird, even though it has to be fenced, it's a bird retention basin. I'm assuming it's not a wall to drop off. Is that correct? Through the we chair, do I understand, right? Commissioner asking? Lopez, uh, can you explain bird? As in, it's it's berm. a it's berm 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 b e r m bermed. Thank you. Um, yes, um, there will be berms out along the street. Um, if you let me get back to my park plan. Oh, went too far. 
Yeah, so in this plan, um, you see that they're actually, they're keeping some of the trees, they're keeping some of those mature trees, they're adding some trees out along bull moose there, and then they will have some berming in order to try to okay. break up those views. And and as part of that, this, the new calculations, because I mean, the way it was before, uh, bigger but not as deep, was not designed correctly, or was it just not designed for the <laughs> thousand year flood that we got? <laughs> and the new one is what are the design standards for that one to what volume? Great question. Uh, I believe from the time it was designed in 1978, 1979, uh, our standards have changed since. Okay. But in the new that calculation, is it still based on a hundred year flood or, or hundred year rain or a different? Okay. So still same, just a different uh, calculation. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Mr. Quinn? So, Lauren, in the diagram you have here, it appears that the park is still also a basin. Is that just a leftover um, drawing? But the, there appears to be topography lines that would indicate that the turf area in the park is also a retention area. Uh, through the chair, Commissioner Quinn, uh, of course, the, it, it is more of a little a basin for the turf area. It, it will retain some water, but it, it's not taking on a majority of the water. It does appear to be three feet deep. Chairman, if I could jump in real quick. So the entire city parcel effectively retains water. Um, anything deeper than 3.49 feet deep needs to be fenced off from Maricopa County. So the uh, the park side of the of the city parcel to be owned uh, will be that that depth that doesn't require fencing, but it will be a basin. So at the 100 year two hour event storm, the retention basin will be full, and the water will fill up above that, and and then go over all the way to the uh, to the city park. Okay. Normal storms will all go to the retention basin and not okay. keep the park inundated, but the whole thing serves as a basin. So that means the it, Roughly, that's between 28 and 30 acre feet of water storage. Yep, that's a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank you. With the exception that the tot lot will be high and dry uh, for code. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, just one question. <clears throat> Excuse me. As it relates to the overall ambitions of water conservation, I'm just curious on the amount of turf shown there. Since this isn't likely to be an activated park with soccer fields and all those other things, just curious on. Um, the immense amount of turf there and if there was any thoughts on reducing that just out of curiosity uh, through the chair uh commissioner um there were a lot of conversations had uh, we've been looking at this for over a year there's been discussions with our parks department um civil it's been an ongoing conversation um at one point it was said to just uh, dg the entire thing but the the tot lot um but I, who would really want to use that? Would you feel comfortable walking a dog in it, letting your child play in it? Um, so we expected that a portion of it be turfed. Okay. I think that the new buzzwords are functional versus non-functional. This would still this would be functional turf versus just being art, uh, decorative. Any other questions? Okay. If the applicant would like to come up, state your name and address for the record, sir, and. Yeah. This one? No, the show's not Oh, side. okay. Yeah, yeah. It's further down. There we go. There. Yeah. That's it. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Ralph Pugh. My office address is in Mesa. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon on behalf of K Hobnanian Homes. And with me here today is Mr. Chuck Chisholm and also Francisco Castell from K Hobnanian. Uh, members of the commission, this has been a long and arduous task to bring this parcel to you today. You are seeing the tip of the proverbial iceberg in the best description possible. A full two years has taken to get to this point. And many thanks to the staff. Let me just say that we've had practically every discipline at the city and every department involved in one way or another in this particular plan and how it could be rehabilitated 
and how it can work today. So thank you to not only your planning and engineering, but other departments, the legal department and everybody has been great to work with to get this to this point today. So I certainly don't intend to uh, reiterate everything that Ms. Schumann had to say today. Her, her presentation was comprehensive and complete. Let, let me just highlight a few things that I heard from commissioners before I forget them. With respect to the uh, density, if you take the 48 lots into 12 full acres, we would be at four units to the acre. I think that was a question or comment that one of you had made earlier. If you do the math, that's what it really amounts to. The other thing having to do with the um, development agreement, we are working with the city's attorney's office and appreciate their help. That will be reviewed and looked at by the city council in conjunction with this case. And that document will define all the parameters within which the retention basin gets built, the park area gets built, when and how does that land get conveyed and transferred to the city, all that technical business is handled uh, in that development agreement. There are and will be planned for this project dry wells, clearly, uh, to make the retention basin uh, function. And with respect to turf, uh, Commissioner, uh, the main basin that's five feet deep and that is protected with the fence will not have turf in the bottom of it. It will be a very uh, functional, for lack of a better word, basin, but the other portion of the park will have turf for the uh, playground area. So what caused the confusion? Someone else asked that question. How did we get to this point, right? This is a highly unusual spot to be in. It all started in 1978 with an ambiguous language, a paragraph in a plat for the Orange Tree subdivision. And what responsibility lied where with respect to retention? That situation just existed uh, and I can't take the fault for it. I started practicing law in 1979. So this was done at about that time, but I didn't do it. I don't know who did it. Nobody in Chandler, frankly, none of the staff had anything to do with it. So we're living today with what happened then. And we're trying to structure it in a way that works now. So the benefits to the city are clearly as follows. One, a retention basin that's designed to be utilitarian, five feet deep, protected with fencing, to serve the neighborhood and the community. So we don't have what happened in 2014. That's number one to the city, and we would hope to hear from our neighbors that it's important to them, right? And so this, the second item here is not only that, but now a public park. So just slightly less than two acres of this land will indeed be a public park with amenities fully accessible to members of the community. That's the second major benefit. Then we also have here an unoccupied structure with unattended to landscaping. Both of those issues combine to not create a very pleasant spot. So we're going to rehabilitate that at our expense and then convey it to the city. So those are things you just don't see in projects and most projects don't have to deal with coming in on a pure infill. I mean, Lauren hit it right on the head describing infill. This is a picture perfect example of that. Um, the other thing I think is important to note that this has a full recommendation from the staff coming to you for approval. We've done a lot in reaching out to the neighborhood, two neighborhood meetings, and admittedly in both meetings, there were pros and cons. Um, but we did reach out, and I think you'll hear uh, probably from both sides of that issue here uh, this evening. The other thing to keep in mind is that this is bringing to the area a new design subdivision with fresh landscaping. The streets are city standard. Um, you can park on both sides of the street, two car garages, parking in the driveway. This is a real subdivision. It's admittedly on lots that are smaller than our neighbors, but when you take the density as a whole and could factor into the land that's being deeded to the city, it gets to be pretty close to the same. Questions have come up that have been answered by the staff with respect to traffic. Your traffic department, along with our traffic uh, study, has indicated that these 48 homes are not going to move the dial on any additional traffic congestion or need, I should say, need to rehabilitate or improve roadways. And traffic signals can't go here on Warner for the reasons mentioned by staff. Parking, people were concerned about parking. I've already explained there's plenty of parking on the site on the streets, in the driveways, in the garages. 
landscaping, fresh new landscaping. We'll agree and did tell the neighbors that we would not allow our construction trucks during construction to come through the county properties to our west. So you may hear from folks that uh, live in the county uh, this evening. We've agreed to that. And we also understand and came to the conclusion the other night in a neighborhood meeting, this project will not touch, interfere with, or do anything with the irrigation system that lies to the, the, the owners to our west. So we don't want to touch that or uh, impede the delivery of that water in any way. So um, again, thank you to everyone for the hard work getting here today. We urge your recommendation of approval. We agree uh, with all the stipulations and conditions, including the one that was just added uh, in the presentation from the staff. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll be quiet unless there are any questions uh, com commissioners have. Questions of the applicant. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pugh. If I could reserve if, a moment for rebuttal if ab necessary. Ab absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so we're calling the speakers. These are in no particular order other than the, the way they came to me from staff. Um, Michael Barron uh, wished to speak on the item. Michael Barron, if you can come up, state your name and address for the record, please. You have three minutes. The light will start with green. It'll go to yellow with about 30 seconds to go, and then red. Just need to finish up, please. So, good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Barron. My wife Karen and I own property directly across the street on Bald Moose, and uh, we are here to say that we fully support the project. We uh, have seen the other project that came forward, and we were hopeful then. And this is a, a far superior project. We we're both full-time real estate agents. We know Kay Hibnani and its product. We're familiar with the the builder. We have no affiliation with them. We just wholeheartedly endorse this. We we had water actually come up within about eight feet of the front door of our property when that event happened. We've owned the property for about 11 years, I believe. But um, we're looking forward to it. It's um, an eyesore, and we appreciate. Uh, there's one of the neighbors, Dwayne Lidman. I don't know if Dwayne is here, but he's a gentleman who lives in Orange Tree who's done an enormous amount of work with the city trying to get a park for the neighborhood. There's no park at all. And so... Thank you to the city, the staff, the developer, everyone. We're just. We're yeah. looking forward to it. It yeah. will be much prettier too. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for the speakers? Any okay. questions? Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Valerie, looks like Melkoff, does not want to speak, but um, is in opposition of the project, prefers something other than gravel in the retention basin, uh, one of the landscape with plant life. So um, staff, could you address the, the retention area? The big one is just going to be gravel. There'll be landscaping on the street or not? Lauren? Chair Human, uh, yes. Uh, there'll be some shade trees up along the street. Um, but as for the bottom of the basin, there's no plans yet right. to landscape okay. it. But the but the long the streetscape when you're driving down you'll be a, it'll have it'll be landscape great thank you okay okay next person Roy Pinkerton uh, wish to speak on the item if you come up and state your name and address for the record if you come up to the dais state your name and address for the record Mr Pinkerton and you have three minutes good evening my name is Roy Pinkerton. I live at 1918 North Bull Moose Drive. <clears throat> I'm opposed to the project for two reasons. One is the traffic. It's not just going to affect Bull Moose and Warner. It's going to affect Ellis and Coronado. They won't be able to get out to the freeway. The line's backed up. That's just one thing. The study was taken on their traffic I don't know, two years ago or three? Since that time, we've had triple the traffic on Warner. They need to look at that again real hard. We voted down not having a traffic light there before. We sure don't want one again. The other reason is kind of dear to my heart. I'm third generation water well driller in this state. I've seen water go from 35 feet deep to 55 feet deep. If you don't stop building these condos and apartments and houses, you're going to run out of water. 
period. That's all I got to say. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you, sir. I appreciate your coming up. Okay, next speaker, Scott. Sorry, I can't pronounce the last name. So it starts with an M. Cool. If you can came up, come up to the dais, state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Scott Mullins. I live at 2317 West Mesquite Street. Um, I do oppose this project on a number of reasons. Um, one that's already been touched on is traffic. Um, there is going to be a problem at Bull Moose and Warner because, like they said, Bull Moose is offset when it hits Warner and staggered, so you can't put a light there or anything like that. Um, right now, there's delays getting in and out of that particular intersection anyway of Bull Moose and Warner. Um, it's going to be even more backed up with the uh, high density of the property that's going in right now. Um, the numbers that have been uh, mentioned for the density don't quite seem right. Um, the least dense the least dense uh, area of Orange Tree right now has 1,400 square foot houses on 7,000 square feet of land. These houses that are being proposed are going to be 50% larger than that on a lot that's 4,000 square feet. It's, it's a lot higher density. It doesn't really fit in with the plan of Orange Tree in general. Um, plus, there aren't any two-story buildings in orange tree and i don't really see that anybody's going to build a second floor addition on there um and parking as far as parking is concerned i know they offer two car garage and spaces in the driveway for two more cars but they basically said that they're going to make sure that everyone parks in their garage. And I don't know that you can really enforce that. And it doesn't seem like there's going to be adequate parking for it. And when they were going through the plans in previous meetings, it didn't seem like they were really, the streets were wide enough to even park on the, the street in front of your house, really, and have like an emergency vehicle be able to make it through. So I do oppose this. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free. Any yeah. question, Mr. Mullins? Staff, you want to address the <clears throat> the parking on the street and the fire? I mean, our traffic department, I, our engineers have already looked at this, correct? Uh, Chair Human, that is correct. Uh, we do have a standard detail for what a street would look like to allow for parking on um, both sides, one side, no side, and per the exhibit provided and uh, for the plans submitted under the uh, preliminary plat, it showed that parking was permitted on both sides of road. And we wouldn't allow anything to be built unless it could have a fire truck go through, things like that, correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next speaker is Brian Campanella. You want to come up and state your name and address for the record? Hi, Brian Campanella, 2100 block of Mariposa. It's a real short road. So, completely opposed to this whole thing. Basically, in my opinion, the city has been colluding with a non constituent to change something without telling the public, as we just learned for two years. Unacceptable. The city council needs to uh, zone everything, get rid of this whole working with developers thing, and have a plan check build to what the property is zoned to, plan check it, and then approve it. You 
obviously have a relationship with the attorney from Pew Law because when he walked in, you had a little joke with each other. Another indication of what I consider to be collusion with a non-constituent. And if even one constituent opposes this, it should not go through. Also, uh, Rick, and I'm not trying to just beat you up here, but trying to add in, well, really, if you consider all of the property, the density is not that high. Well, they're not allowed to consider that property for their density. So why did you bring that up? Again, another indication that we have this relationship with a non-constituent. Okay, and it's very obvious that this is going to get pushed through. Okay, it's wrong. It doesn't, com it doesn't fit with the neighborhood. It's, I, I believe in free enterprise, and, and uh, except there's no such thing in America anymore because of all the regulations. But capitalism is a wonderful thing, but not at the expense of this neighborhood. The only reason that the number is 48 is because that's the absolute largest number they can squeeze in here. Okay, if you change the zoning. The other thing is, is when we showed the, uh, the page with all the parks around here, we didn't show the size of the park that this is going to have. You know why? Because it's minuscule. The original park for the orange tree was supposed to be that whole area. The other thing nobody seems to understand is I have seen that property irrigated. So that canal is also property of the landowner and to abandon it you have to put it back into full use or you know if it can't have any cracks and breaks in it that's the responsibility of the people who abandon it which would be keho keho so this just this whole thing just disgusts me sir could you wrap up your statement please why because it's uncomfortable no because you have three minutes sir three minutes huh Okay, well, it's an absolute ridiculous number of homes, and it is the density that it is. And the park should have been the whole bench, the whole basin. And now we get this little minuscule one that we didn't put on the map because it's going to show how small it is relative to the other parks that we so uh, proudly showed. That's it. I mean, I, I'd go on forever, but. Thank you, sir. Sir, I'm, I'm just going to address one thing. <clears throat> Accusing me of collusion with an attorney. I've been on this dais for many years, and most zoning attorneys will tell you that I've voted against a lot of their projects, and I voted for some of the projects. So uh, I appreciate your comments in terms of density, things like that, but to accuse this dais or myself of conclusion, I think, is very irrelevant. So, okay. Next speaker I have is Denise Campanella. If you want to state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Denise Campanella, and I'm a resident of the Orange Tree neighborhood. Um, I am uh, in favor of this uh, cleaning up of this property. I'm just not in favor of the density that is proposed in changing the zoning. You've got 48 homes that you've identified that have the potential of having as many as four of their own cars. Uh, these are big, big homes for families that have more than one car, two cars. All of them have to leave this subdivision off of Bull Moose. Um, due to opposition, there originally was only one exit onto Bull Moose, which is only approximately two car lengths before you hit Warner, the first exit. The second exit now has been opened up uh, for more cars to come out, you know, to be able to exit the development. The density along Warner Road in the early mornings when people are going to work. Um, I used to take that route to go to work. 
I went, I left my home just depending on what my schedule was for the day, anytime between 5 a.m. and 8 o'clock. And I can tell you that there were times that I would have to sit for almost five minutes waiting for the traffic to come down Warner. And I have seen the traffic to get onto the 101 backed up as far as the school for the deaf, okay, which is the, the, develop, the uh, building to the west of this property in, in the early morning. So all that traffic. Tonight, because I was here for the early part of the, the meeting, we learned that there is a, another potential uh, PAD development one quarter mile south of Warner and Dobson with 100, I thought maybe it was 100, 110 properties. Any of those people are going to come the quarter of a mile up to the turn at Warner and to come on over to the uh, 101 as well. So the density along Warner is going to be incredible between the 48 homes here and the 110 that are just one quarter mile south of uh, Warner. That is, that is my concern. I drove down Bull Moose today. Bull Moose is 25 mile an hour uh, speed limit on, on Bull Moose. The person behind me was in my trunk and I glanced at my speed speedometer and I was going 28 miles an hour. And he was like trying to push me down the street. We had a horrible accident at the corner of El Alba and Bull Moose because somebody was speeding. Injuries and the whole thing, that's in the middle of the neighborhood. So we already have a problem with speeding along Bull Moose. With this, all this additional traffic, um, it, I, I think it's untenable for the neighborhood. Okay, if you can wrap up, please, thank you. And that's what I have to say. Thank you for your comments, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, Nicholas Wist. Uh, Wist. Wist. Okay, thank you. You can uh, state your name and address for the record. Be great. Okay, uh, my name is Nicholas Wist. I live at two two one two West Los Arbor Lakes Place, and uh, well, I we moved there in nineteen eighty three, so we're original people over there at uh, Orange Street One. I'd just like to speak to the quality of the homes. I I work for a, a company that um, surveys new developments in the East Valley, uh, Mesa, Gilbert, Chandler. And um, in the capacity of what I've done, I've surveyed uh, all the builders, Sultan, um, Pulte, all those guys, and, and Hovenian, uh, K. Hove. And their products are always really, really good. Their neighborhoods are great. The houses look great. And so I'm just here to just say that I've really been impressed with their product. I have no association with those guys other than just that I uh, uh, surveyed all these properties all over the place. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. That's it. Any questions? Oh. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Kenneth Marks, you can state your name and address for the record. My name is Kenneth Marks, 2533 West El Alba Way. Uh, I'm in the county portion of it. And uh, I went, there were two things I wanted to talk about. I started off wanting to talk about traffic only, but the issue, I'm glad the commissioner brought up the issue of the dry wells because that points out something too. The retention basin not only has to be of a size to contain the water during a certain storm, but it has to get rid of it in a certain period of time too. And that's what the dry wells are for. So hopefully the city will keep an eye on that sort of thing so that uh, uh, we don't have a big mosquito lake there like we have had in the past. It's amazing how many can breed in there in a very short length of time. My other issue is uh, uh, traffic. Uh, on El Alba, let's see, we don't really have a map to point to. Maybe you have a map you can look at there. El Alba is uh, an east-west street, uh, which is the first street you would come to on the west side of uh, 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 Bull Moose as you're going north from uh, Warner. And uh, that 
whole street there, and uh, it, it dead ends into 91st, which then turns south and gets onto Warner. And we have a certain amount of cut through traffic now because Bull Moose, that intersection of Bull Moose and Warner, like so many people have said, is a, a tough intersection there. And if people find it difficult to get in and out there, they like to go up 91st and cut down El Alba. So in a nutshell, that's my concern, that we get shortcutting traffic coming through there. If that intersection of Bull Moose gets worse, which I believe it will. And uh, uh, in terms of the development itself, uh, I think the applicants uh, have good reputations. I think they've been around a while. I think they've been responsive to the uh, questions that we've had, and I don't have any problem with that. But there, these two issues are issues that I uh, would appreciate you folks looking at. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, to staff, El Alba, once the subdivision is built, will El Alba go through anymore? Or, Lauren, can you address that? Well, Chair Human, uh, El, Al El Alba. <laughs> Say it's uh, th three times fast. <laughs> uh, Chair Human, uh, El Alba Way is the street directly north of the retention basin. Um, the, so uh, the that's, what was so the it's question? No, so I was just curious. That's that's just north. It's not part of this project, really. It's north of it. Okay, I just well, want to clarify it's, that. It's okay. the street directly north of what's going to be the retention basin. Okay, I just want to clarify. And the dry wells, I think that's already been addressed by by you guys as staff. So okay, per, thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming. Per the plans being reviewed, uh, they're required to drain within thirty six hours. Okay, cool. All right, um, and hopefully we'll never have another five and a half inches in two hours like we did. Um, Vicki Marks, you want to come up and state your name and address for the record? Good evening. My name is Vicki Marks. I live at, on El Alba also, and uh, that is a county area, and, and so it is a difficult area to, to try to of assimilate with the city. My concern is basically um, the retention, the wall along the whole project on the west side. We have um, our irrigation ditches that come down. We have some traffic on them now of people that shouldn't be there, not many. And I am concerned that there will not, I would like to know if there's going to be enough interest in a wall high enough that we don't have people from the park, we don't have people from the other area coming over into our area. We beginning to, not us, but the, the church has begun to have some um, campers there. And I don't want them to, be more uh, interested in coming down those canals. We also have animals. We have chickens stolen. <laughs> we have a lot of issues with uh, people coming over. So the project is probably going to be okay. I am also concerned about traffic, but it's just going to have to work out somehow. We're worried about El Alba because it's a very small street width-wise. We have a lot of joggers, a lot of kids, a lot of people riding horses up and down the street. So we would, and that's early in the morning they do that. So we're a little concerned about the problems that will ensue from people wanting to come down El Alba, go across, go out 91st, or come in. So that's just my concerns. I hope um, the developer will also get back to us on a wall there because. We don't want to be liable for people falling in the ditch or climbing over a five foot high fence into the ditch. So thank you for your consideration on this. So let me ask staff, Lauren, in terms of the irrigation ditch, or in terms of the wall and stuff, and the irrigation ditch, we're not blocking that because it's still a functioning ditch. I oh, the ditch, the ditch is not a problem. Okay. It's, it's, it's mainly on the homeowner's concern. Okay. And we just don't want 
people from this side coming over and to all this property and possibly cause it problems. Because right now it's it's open. Can't they do it right now? It's it's open now, isn't it? It has about a five foot high fence. Okay. okay. Uh, so, chicken wire fence. To address the campers, just so you know, we have a um, department in our city that if you have that situation come up, feel free to call. Um, it's Leah Powell's office. I don't know the phone number or anything, but staff can get that for you. So when you do have that, we do have issues around the city where, uh, where I live oh. on the west side. So, but Thank Thank uh, staff may even get you that number too. So if you do have that happen, please feel free to call the staff okay. so they can deal Thank with that you. stuff for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Is there anybody else in the audience? It's all the speaker cards I have. Anybody else in the audience want to address this issue? Okay. I have somebody in the back there. If you want to come up and state your name and address for the record, that'd be great. And make sure I don't miss anybody. Hi, my name is Noel Coates. I live on Marlboro Estates off 91st, so I'm just south of Elliott, um, north of the property you're talking about. Um, just a couple of things that came up. We our prop we are in county property, so our property has um, backed up to that new development that's on price. I don't know if you know it's a rental development that you guys approved a couple of years ago that's finally completed. Lots of water used to build homes. We were amazed at how much water is used to, to build homes to address the, the water issue that came up. Um, we are concerned about traffic on 91st because already people from south of us cross 91st that live uh, south of Mesquite come through our neighborhood. They don't follow the speed limit. A lot of There's no sidewalks. So if you're walking, riding your bike, your kids are out. There's no, um, there, you really have to pay attention and some people don't. Um, because we've dealt with this property that's being built, they don't take care of the ditch. I believe they're supposed to. When they were building that property, the diggers, the, the heavy equipment came right up to the ditch. They didn't pay attention. There's a lot of cracks in it and now it's all overgrown. And I'm matter of fact, I'm totally surprised that the city of Chandler hasn't notified the residents in that area that that the ditch needs to be taken care of because um, we've got we we've, we've got the that pro new property and then the condo property and then the the um, nursing home that are there. So none of them use the ditch. So it's all the responsibility of those of us in the in the county property to make maintain the ditches and make sure and that uh, the water flow is is good and and we get no help or assistance from that side um and then god there was one more thing um the ditch oh the fire trucks if you i, I do you guys go and look at these properties before before you have these meetings there's no way a fire truck can go down that that road that of of the um that new property that they built it is so narrow so they what they did is they built an uh an entrance that's locked to the condo that's just south of them, so that if there is an emergency, that they will um, they'll go through the condos to get to that street because you can barely drive down that street. And we have friends in Marble um, Estate, which is a which is the pro, uh, the uh, neighborhood on sorry I know neighborhood on that's on Price and Elliott, the corner there. And so now people from that new development are parking in their neighborhood because there isn't enough parking on that street. So those are just some of the issues that we might encounter with this new development. Thank you. Thank you um, to staff on a couple of things, ma'am. On the on the water on the just so you're aware, when you build a, the the Maricopa County has very strict rules about dust control. So that's why there's a lot of water used just to keep the dust down. Just to be aware of that, um, staff on the ditch issue. I think we're talking about the Reed Porter project. I'm guessing on on Price Road. Will you get with our, our, you guys take a look at that, make sure that if they damage that, that's fixed. That should be their responsibility. Um, and also on parking, um, that's a rental that they're supposed to be responsible for keeping their parking on their site. Um, so if you could take a look at that as well. The speed thing is a speed thing. It's a problem in every neighborhood in every city, all through Chandler, that, um, and your 91st Street's in the county, so it'd have to be the sheriff's department. But if it's even in, in, in the uh, Orange Street neighborhood and you have problems with speeders, the best thing to do is get a hold of the beat sergeant. Uh, it's a problem throughout our city. People think they 
35 or 45 doesn't mean 35 or 45, it means 60. So, um, but I do appreciate the comments and we'll have staff take a look at some of those things you brought up though. So thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Pugh, if you'd like then to any rebuttal or are you good? No, we're good. Okay, all right, great. With that, I am gonna close the floor and any comments from the commission? Commissioner Lopez. Yeah, I'll go first and address some. Um, so uh, some of you may know this, I am new to planning and zoning, but I did serve, I uh, just finished up my uh, eight years on the Chandler City Council. So there's a few things in here too, wanna you know, elaborate more on, um, some here on the dais and maybe some afterwards. So I'll address water first. Again, a lot of concerns were brought up about water. Um, I can talk to you a lot uh, afterwards, uh, but Chandler is good with water when we talk about the growth, this is all planned for. We've got a hundred year water, assured water supply for Chandler. So all of this at hundred percent build up is part of that calculation. So our growth is already built into that. Plus we have, I think it's 15% um, uh, above and beyond even at hundred year build out. So uh, water wise, we're good, uh, but we always have concerns. Uh, so if you want to learn more about it on how Chandler deals with it, I can speak with you afterwards. Um, traffic, uh, as uh Chair said about speeding, and you know, we all we all deal with it, especially around schools. Um, there's also a way not just to contact the police, but if you contact uh, Chandler Traffic, they can set up um, uh, traffic counters so they can see speeding, they can see counts, and this is how a lot of studies are done to determine whether stop signs and or street lights or other things would be uh, need to altered in order to alter traffic flow. So if you do feel there's a lot, again, a big problem with the speeding on Bullness, please contact our traffic uh, department and they can get some uh, meters out there and start tracking that. And I think it does speed also. I'll look for staff nods. I don't know if it does speeding. I know it does counts, but I'm seeing nods that they also do check speed. So, um, and then that way, if the numbers are bad, one of our neighborhoods by an elementary school is real bad, uh, we want to uh, uh, posting a, a police officer there uh, consistently so that it kind of slowed the traffic down. So. One there, uh, and I don't know if the uh, applicant want to answer this or, or somebody from staff um, on the traffic also. Uh, timing of the study, my assumption is that since it was, again, this was different than all the other previously proposed um, uh, recommendations or for the for the build out here, because those were larger units. I think there was more count, higher count the last time when it came through council and didn't go, um, that this was smaller. So my assumption is that it was a new traffic study for this count that was done, not one from two or three years ago. Chairman, uh, Commissioner, yes. So uh, not only do we, we had a reporters group submit a traffic impact analysis, uh, we had this group submit one as well. Um, we don't simply take their counts and then their estimations. Um, our traffic engineer then looks at, we, we've been counting that. I think we recently counted that road as well, and so she goes and looks at what they said this will project to provide, and then measure that against what we measured out in the field today. So, um, Bull Moose, we've honestly uh, truly been looking at this site for about four years, <laughs> and it's been measured probably eight times in that four years. Okay, thank you. So, I just want to make sure we had up to date study, um, and then irrigation ditch. Yeah, you know, we talked about maintenance, and again, I remember some previous ones that had come through, uh, arguing on who owns the ditch, who maintains the ditch. Um, again, this seems to be out of the purview of this case. So ditch is supposed to be maintained as it was from previous owners. Nothing city and, and the, uh, the applicant are doing nothing to maintain or quantify the ditch. Is that correct? correct. Okay. So I just wanted to clarify that. So as it was yesterday, it is to be tomorrow with the ditch. Okay. Um, Last bit, uh, again, I want to thank you all for coming out. We had some pro, some against. Uh, I try to tell this to a lot of people that do come and spend, take time out of your own day to come out and deal with city government. So I understand it can be frustrating, um, but we do listen. Everybody on the dais here, we all live in these neighborhoods. We're going to be living uh, next door or even, you know, maybe even down the street and use these streets ourselves. Um, so we do consider your input. Uh, we may not agree with you on, on where it may end up or what in what side of the fence it may land, uh, but don't please don't take it as we are not listening and we don't care, um, but that we are having to evaluate it from different perspectives as a whole. Uh, and as part of that, again, we're just a recommending body to the council. Uh, the staff recommends to us, we recommend to the council, and again, this all ends with the city council. So uh, if you feel it doesn't go your way, or if you do feel it goes your way and you don't want it to change, 
uh, please do engage with the council uh, in next week when it comes before them. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. I, that, um, do we have a motion on a motion on this case? I'd have to look it up. No. Get Hold on. I'll, I'll move for approval. Oh, okay. thank you. Got to get the right number. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, made a, I have it on presentation right now. So this is, uh, yeah, so I move for approval of the rezoning preliminary development plan and preliminary plat of PLH22-0018 and PL222-0017 Honeysuckle Trail located at the northwest corner of Warner Road and Bull News Drive, approximately one half mile west, west of Dobson Road. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. Okay. We have a second. Any any further comments on this? I, I do want to read uh, Commissioner Lopez. I almost said council member. We served together. Uh, Commissioner Lopez's comments. Um, this is we are just recommending body number one. I, I, I do want to commend the applicant and staff. I mean, this has been an, a long process. This is an eyesore in the area. Um, you know the challenges and you know on traffic as we build out our city. I've been here 50 years, you know, when there was no traffic. I moved in, I lived in Heatherbrook, north of you guys, um, back in the 80s when there was, <clears throat> wasn't a lot of traffic. Uh, it's unfortunate that people want to live in Phoenix. I guess it's a, a good and the bad. Um, traffic happens. I think the impact on this is 48 units. It's, it's pretty minimal, but it does clean up a situation that is an eyesore. Um, we have another flood you know, we could have hat homes being damaged and things like that. So um, I reason I asked the question about charter schools, charter schools could buy this property and there's not much we could do. And if you go buy some of the charter schools around the city, you want to see traffic, it's insane. So um, I think this is a good use. I think the builder has done a good job uh, working with us. This is not something that happened. The meetings, the two meetings versus one, I know there's been a lot. Uh, Dwayne's in the audience. I know he's been in every commission meeting and council meeting forever working on this to make it a better thing. It's, and we're not always going to agree on stuff. There's gives and takes on all this kind of stuff, but um, I do support the project. So with that, I'll chair, chair, if I could, sorry to sure. interrupt. Um, I don't recall. I'm, I'm drawn in blank. Did we have additional stipulations read in? So we, we did have a stipulation that was tweaked. It was tweaked. So if so, I think the motion needs to reference this reference. Mod, right. So Commissioner mod. Lopez in the second, if you want to allow him to just oh, if, staff, do you want to just read read that in? That's the best way. If I yeah, so if if I can, then just add that. Uh, Why don't we have group. staff read read it in? Okay, we'll do yeah. it that way. So it's an additional stipulation. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so PDP stipulation number eleven. The same elevation and or floor plan shall not be built side by side on lots one through eight backing to Warner Road. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, motion 11 with uh, read in stipulation. Is the second okay with that? Correct. Okay, cool. City Attorney, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Any other comments? Okay, all those in favor of the project say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Again, we're recommending body to the city council. This is going, uh, staff, when is this going to council? Chair Human, uh, this will be on the uh, June, Thursday, June 29th uh, city council meeting. Okay. So to the audience, you will have an opportunity at that time to go back in, in front of council. They make the final decision on this. We're just recommending body on it. So thank you very much. Okay. Any comments from staff? A couple things, Chair. So uh, one of the residents had brought up uh, homeless, and uh, there is actually a, uh, a hotline uh, on the city's website. Uh, we've got a fantastic uh, community navigator group uh, led by Missy Gefsison, um, and they're great at, at linking people experiencing homelessness with uh, the services needed to get out of that. Just wanted to out to the public what the phone number is. So it's 480-782-4302 is that Chandler Cares line. I mean, that will, if you see somebody, if you see a group, you see something, that's the number to call, um, and then they're on it. Okay, thank you very much. And then the, uh, the second thing I want to mention, uh, a lot of people know and some people don't, uh, but in the audience tonight, we've got Derek Horn, uh, and tonight is actually going to be his last PZ meeting here uh, as our director, since we, have, we won't be having the next PZ meeting before he formally retires from the city of Chandler. So... He was development service director for five years. We've had the pleasure of working with him for five years. Uh, when he entered, we didn't have anything regarding historic preservation. And in that time, he created the historic preservation ordinance. And he had the two items that went on the, on the agenda tonight. 
uh, that went for or the agenda item that went for tonight. So, uh, just wanted to recognize Derek, thank him for five years, uh, wish him well. <laughs> Other than that, no comments. Thank you. I, I want to reiterate what Kevin said, Derek. Thank you very much. Um, you worked really hard and a lot for the city. Um, your love of uh, historic stuff is also great. Um, and next time you have to help make sure staff knows it's Williamsfield. It wasn't General Award. But um, thank you, Joe, for your service. We really do appreciate it. Enjoy your retirement as well. So um, we will not meet again until the middle of July. So wish everybody a very happy 4th of July celebration. Be, be safe. And everybody have a great rest of your night.